Hello, I'm Thomas Grillo. I recently had the pleasure of attending the Hands Off 2011 Theremin Symposium in Scarborough, United Kingdom. While I was there, I picked up a neat little item that drastically enhances the quality of the tone of the Etherwave standard, as well as extending its pitch range by two octaves. And I'll just give you a quick demonstration of this. And it's, it's, uh, there's no accompanied music, it's just the pure tone of the theremin. And uh, basically it sounds something like this. Yeah, it gets pretty low. Basically, this device that I found that goes into this instrument is very small. It's just a little module chip, not even a chip, it's a, it's a module. It has several components on a circuit board. And you solder it into your theremin, and it, it just drastically en enhances the quality of the tone. Right now, I'm using a setting of uh, waveform at about 10 o'clock and brightness set to about 3 o'clock. And it gives me a nice string-like tone in, the, in this setting. really a gorgeous sound and right now my tuning I did the installation and tuning myself so it's not quite getting as high as I would like it to perhaps once I send the instrument off to theory and and let him modify it it'll get a little more range Right now I'm getting about a D. On a good day I can get the instrument up to about an E. Let's hear a little more in the bass range. Now I'm going to go ahead and set the theremin to another setting that will give it more of a flute-like -like setting in the high notes and a, more of a clarinet sound in the mid-range. 
And with these settings, I've got waveform set to a little bit past 330, and the uh, brightness set a little bit less than 3, about 230. Let's try adjusting that a little bit. And that works a little better. What I've done is I've brought the waveform down just to about the 230 mark and moved the brightness to about the 230 mark, or excuse me, the 330 mark. try another setting. This time we'll try for a more of a horn-like setting. We'll cover that a little more. That was with the uh, waveform set to about the 230 position and brightness to about the 930 position. Now we'll try it with the brightness set to about the 3, th three position. Of course that's back to the flute so we'll bring that back. Now this is with the waveform set to the nine, about the nine o'clock position and the brightness set to the nine o'clock position as well.
again, as you can hear, that gives it a nice, nice trumpet-like sound. That's a little bit brighter horn. I don't know, that might be close to a crumb horn sound, not sure. Now that's more like it, that's more, more of a horn-like sound. Now if you want a kind of a buzzy sound, uh, you know, just bring the uh, waveform all the way to the left. And just play in the mid-range. You can bring your brightness up a little bit. And that was with the uh, waveform set to, oh, I guess the 7 o'clock position, full left, and the brightness set to about the 10 o'clock position. Pretty cool. And now we'll set the waveform back to the nice uh, 10 o'clock position and the brightness to about the 2, 2.30 position. find out how many octaves this instrument has with the module installed. There's one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, at least seven octaves, better than seven actually. I would say it's a full seven plus octaves uh, musically playable and then of course the lowest octave you have, uh, it's great for effects and uh, it's musical. And as you can hear, it's not the crackly Geiger counter sounding like uh, tone that you got with the Etherwave standard before the modification.
Now let's hear an EtherWave standard that's not been modified. All right, I have with me now an EtherWave standard which has not been modified. And we'll just find out how it sounds. I've got the waveform and brightness set to a nice, pleasant setting. Everything is totally different between the unmodified EtherWave standard and the modified one. On the old EtherWave standard, I basically would set the waveform and brightness so that they were pointing towards each other to get a nice, pleasant tone. Go ahead and retune. There we go. And we'll find out what note we're on uh, with this tuning. It's about a D, about the same as the tuning I had on the other instrument. I like to keep my instrument tuned kind of on the high side. I prefer a little bit higher than what I'm getting, but without Theory's magic touch, that's as good as it's going to get. So let's see how many octaves we can get with the unmodified EtherWave standard. One, two, three, four, five, about six, and then the rest is Geiger counter. One of the things I liked about the unmodified EtherWave standard is I did get a nice uh, horn-like sound, uh, particularly in the, in the low range. It sounds a little, little bit like a tuba. But of course, you also get the Geiger counter effect too in that range. Now let's see what happens if I match the settings that I had for the flute setting on the modified ETH wave standard. You kind of sort of get a flute-like setting in the high range of the EtherWave standard unmodified, but it's not quite as, quite as good as the uh, modified version. And then it goes to sounding like a totally different instrument. Uh, By the way, you'll notice the linearity is a little bit different between the unmodified EtherWave standard and the modified EtherWave standard. Of course, a lot of that has to do with how you tune the uh, internal uh, tuning slugs. And of course, we'll go back to my favorite setting. Tough decision to go for the modification of the EtherWave standard, uh, but I'm glad I did. Uh, I might, in the future, I might leave one EtherWave standard unmodified so that I can still get this horn-like sound, but for the most part, I think I'll be using the, uh, the modified EtherWave standard as, as, a, as, a, as a dominant theremin for, the, uh, for a lot of my work, uh, along with the B3s. So 
So there you have it, a comparison between the modified EtherWave standard and the unmodified EtherWave standard. Thank you and have a good day.